Do you use Ancestry on a tablet? I don't that often. I'll be honest with you. I primarily use my computer. But the other day I was sitting out here on my deck working on some family history and I pulled out a really nice iPad that my husband gave me and started working on Ancestry. And it was really different. And most of my videos, well, all of my videos to this point have talked about how to use Ancestry on a computer because that's where I use it. And to be honest, that's where I prefer to use it because I have multiple screens and I think I work more effectively that way. But sometimes when I'm traveling, an iPad works great or other tablet works great to have the information and not have to put it, you know, bring my big computer with me and junk like that. So today I'm going to go over some of the features on the app for the iPad. Now a tablet may be slightly different, but it's going to probably be pretty much the same. And so I don't have one, so this is all I have to show you with. But hopefully this will be really helpful to you if you're using a tablet. Some people, that's all they use. I have some people that reach out to me and say, I'm using a tablet. And so I felt like it was high time for me to do a video like this. So, I'm Amy Cross and I want to help you take your genealogy to the next level. And if you're using a tablet, you need to know how to use Ancestry. And I'm, so I'm going to just take you through and show you some of the tricks on using a tablet on Ancestry, where things can be found, and all that good stuff. So, here we go. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a handout with this video. The handout is going to be available on my Etsy page, which there will be a link at the end of this video, or you can go into the video description below to pick that up. Or if you're a member of Amy's crew, you get it for free, so you can't hate that. The handout will have more information in it than I was able to cover in the video. All of the step-by-steps from this video, plus a little bit more, so you might want to check it out. So when you open up your tablet, you're going to see a screen like this. I have a spot here where I can pick up where I left off as well as a bunch of videos and stories. And anyway, you can play around with all of that. There are lots of different things here. All right. So one of the really important buttons is to click on yourself. So you click on yourself on the top left here. And if I hit me, then I can see my profile and I can edit it. I have my messages that I have from other people that will show up. And then I have anything that I've bookmarked to save for later. I have the current tree that I pulled up, and this is really important here if you have more than one tree. Then you can choose some of your other trees that you may have um, added to your account here. And that's what's going to show up on your other screen. So if you have more than one tree and you can't figure out how to go there, this is where. All right, I can switch the tree right here and then I can switch the tree that I'm gonna be working off of. Actually, we'll, we'll change it to my teaching tree. Let's change to that one. So now it's downloading the teaching tree and the information that I have in that. Now let me go back up here to this to, to my face or your, it'll be your initials or whatever if you didn't upload a picture. And you can see a group if you have your groups. You can manage your DNA tests and switch tests and look at tests here. You can look at your through lines and whatnot here. And then you can change your appearance, your account. Like if I want to change the appearance from light to dark on my iPad. Any notifications that maybe I have from Ancestry will come up if I hit that. And my different communication settings. So I'm going to exit out of here now and now I'm in the tree that I wanted and I got to the tree by clicking this button here at the bottom. Now if I click discover it's going to take me back to that home page that we were just at a minute ago. Let me point out a couple of other things right up here on the top right I have hints and this is going to show me all of my hints that I have that I could use for this tree and I can filter them right here by hint type a record, a photo, a story, whatever you want. I'm going to go back out of my hints by going back on the left hand side here. I can go here to my messages, people that I've messaged or if I want to message somebody. And then the little bell is any notifications that I have about things that they think they found for me. Let's talk a little bit more about some of these other things. I'm going to go to DNA. Now, my DNA is going to show up here and it's going to start with my ethnicity, my ethnicity. 
And so I can take a look at that here, as well as some of the other DNA inheritance things that I have accessible to me here. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into every single one of these features, or this video would be three hours long, and nobody wants to look at that. This is just a quick overview. All right. So um, my matches are right there. So if I click my matches, my match list will come up. And then my traits is right here. And this is the traits thing where they can tell you if you have high pain tolerance or whatever. Some of you may have it, some of you may not. It's up to you. You can also get that kind of stuff on 23andMe. So I want to get out of this now. And so I'm going to go over to memories here on the bottom. And this shows me all of the memories that I've uploaded to my tree, all the media that I've uploaded, whether I have it in separate albums. I can create memories here. I can create a story, record audio, which is great with your iPad. I can colorize. I can create the, f this is like all of these great tools that Ancestry has been happy have been adding to the iPad. I can also take a photo or scan a photo here on the iPad, which is really helpful. So if I click scan a photo, then it's going to use my camera. I need to give it access. So I love the fact that I can scan or take a photo with my iPad, super helpful. And then I can also take something off of my camera roll which um, needs access to my library. So you need to choose whether or not you want to allow access. All right, let's go into the search. Now the search feature is the same as that search feature up at the top of your screen when you're looking at it on a computer. Here you can search all records or you can search certain groups. You can add in events for death, birth, marriage, and other things that you might find differently on a computer screen. So this is how you can search all, all records. Now, if I search a record, like I'm going to put in my dad here, George, and then I'm going to put in Stevenson, and he was born in 1940. And I'm just going to search with that. And let's see what we have. Now, I have a lot of records here. Now, how do I deal with all of these on an iPad? It's really different. Right now, on this top right, I'm seeing them in a list view. But I can see them in different squares, which is kind of nice on an iPad. And then this far right button, I can filter. I can filter to just my census and voter list and pick my century or I can filter by marriage, birth, a lot of other things. This filter is in a different place. You might want to take a look at that, but these are the same kind of filtering that I've done in my other videos. It just looks different on a computer. So that's a way to make a clean search where you input the information. And I've talked about that in my videos sometimes. All right, now let's go into the tree. This is where I was playing around the last time and I was like, wow, this is really different. This is kind of hard. We're going to go ahead and go into my great grandfather, Georgie Paston. Now this isn't my regular tree, this is just a teaching tree, it's not complete, I haven't added a lot of information in it, and it gives me a place to find new things. They're going to open it first in his life story where they're taking some of the facts and they're putting it in the life story, same as what you see on your computer. Right here I have the gallery and I can click on this picture of George, isn't that an awesome picture? I can add notes to George right here where I can add a note that is only seen by me or somebody that I've allowed as an editor. That is the same in a tree online, but it's in a different place. So there is notes right there, and I can search records right up here. Now this is not a clean search. This is going to populate the information that I already had down for George. This, it looks the same as the other search does, but if I click on the filters here, you'll see that there's already a bunch of information that's been put in for him that I had already put into my tree. Doesn't allow me to really play with it very much other than the fact that I can move this toggle to, you know, like plus or minus exact, plus or minus one, two, five, 10, 15 years. That, that, that makes it a little bit harder. I really like how I have the ability to change those filters in the computer that I can't do on the iPad. And this is one of the things that was kind of slowing me down. I can view the saved records that I've already saved to George, and I can select certain categories like I did before, but it is a little bit different. So, I don't know. It's like Ancestry, if you can like allow us to add or change a filter in here, 
that would be really nice and you can't. All right, now if I select a record, like this is a 1900 census, this is asking, asking if this is my George. It's in San Francisco. He's a ship steward. He's single. This is my George. So I can expand that image by clicking that button. And then I can just use my fingers to open it up a little bit bigger. So I can look at this. And when I'm done with that, I can just exit it. I can comment on that picture right here, or I can like it which would then put it into my saved stuff. But now I'm gonna exit out of it, and now I'm back to this record. Now I wanna say, yes, this is my George. So I wanna save this record to Georgie Paston. So I'm gonna do the details. Now, on this side is this record. On this side is what I have in the tree. I can click the edit button and edit anything with a green check mark, a new fact that's going to be saved. And I actually kind of like this, it, it keeps the occupation in here. And when you save it on the, the computer, it doesn't. So that's a little bit different. So that gave me the details. Then I go back to save the record and then I have to save it up here on the top right. Now I've saved this record for George. Here is George with his wife, Ama. And it shows Ama's down here. Remember, always look at the image. I'm gonna zoom in. My great grandma's name is Ama, and that's the address where they live. That's my guy. So I'm gonna say yes down here at the bottom right. I still have my details here where I'm adding new information. And you know, I really wish, this is really nice that they're adding in this description. They're adding in the steward. When you save this record on a computer, that doesn't happen. So Ancestry, get it together and do that on your computer too, just saying. All right, now if I click on Ama, I can save this to her and I can look at her details as well. So I'm gonna save this record on the top right there to George and to Ama, and now that record's been saved. And now I'm going to click on facts right here. So this is very similar to the facts that I see on the computer. It shows that's in a timeline. It shows whether or not there's a source attached to the fact. Um, it doesn't give me the lines where I see the sources to the facts. If I click on the fact, it'll show me what the source is here. And then I could go click on that source and see that record. But I really do love those lines. It's just so much more um, all in one. And then if I go to my sources tab, I have a listing of all my sources and family. I have a listing of his family, his parents and spouse, and I can go to them that way. As I'm moving around my tree, I just hold onto my screen. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. Um, I can go to somebody new in the tree by clicking on that and viewing their profile. Again, this is very much the way it is on a computer. So I hope this has been helpful for you about how Ancestry works on an iPad and probably any other tablet. If you have a tablet, would you make a comment and let us know if it's different? Um, if you found other things are different on a tablet or iPad as they are to a computer or to a phone, put that in the comments as well and we can share our knowledge. Because I'll be honest with you, I haven't done this a lot and I'd love to hear your experiences and whether you like things working better on a tablet than you do on your computer or on your phone. I'd love to hear. Um, I really appreciate you watching. Please like this video if it's been of help to you and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. This video right over here is another video about how to use Ancestry effectively. I hope it helps and I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much.